I went and bought one of the uh, an early sort of sampler keyboard. And it had like six seconds of sampling and uh, and an Atari 1040, which is like I sort of laugh at it now. How, how you know there's more power on a on a key ring for the car. So it's um it's just uh it was doing that, and then I worked in a studio uh, as a tea boy kind of thing, and I was doing that, working with my dad, building swimming pools, and working in the studio at night, and then doing radio shows as well uh, in town. So I was just completely knackered. And then um, my mum said to my dad, if you want to do him a favour, just sack him, because he'll have to make some money out of music. So uh, she did, he, he sacked me. So. I had uh, the recording studio, I had the top floor of Apple, so I had the recording studio, and we used to make our own tracks that would just be sold in the record shop, and. Uh, and then they sort of like went elsewhere. We were sort of making darker garage uh, and early sort of grime stuff, you know, that kind of that kind of sound. And it was it was weird. It wasn't selling at all. Our, our kind of stuff was very very small. Um, and we invented, well, we put together the label as something that we would sell just in the record shop. This was before you, MP3s and pitch file sharing, you know. So if you wanted a tune, you'd have to go and buy it on vinyl, and you'd have to come to our shop. This was stuff we just wanted to sell only in our shop so that people would have to come there or go on the internet because we had a shop that we would sell records and send them out in the post. So they'd come to the record shop and hopefully buy other stuff and stuff. It was just sort of like almost it was something to get people to come to the shop. Yeah, they're about 15 years old. They're probably maybe a bit younger than that. We sort of signed them when they were when they were 16. They were, they were bringing in tracks on mini discs and... and uh, playing them in the shop and they just got better and better and better and then there was a point where we just sort of said let's put it out. I had Benger in there for a, a week's work experience <laughs> just because he hated school and he was in the record shop anyway so when the work experience thing come up he sort of said uh, you know can I come into the studio so he spent a week in there but then um, yeah Scream was always around and uh, he worked in the shop on Saturdays and but he was there every day everyone was all there every day it was just a, it was like a weird kind of hangout that no one left. <laughs> yeah, we definitely wanted to keep it anonymous um, and we thought that was how it was always going to be because we wanted to make music and see what people thought about it without them knowing it was us because rather than going, oh, this is our new thing, you know, we wanted to make something a bit different and it was, it was sort of like we were making a bit more electronic, techie kind of stuff uh, with vocals in it and, uh, and it was, you know, we thought, let's just see what people think about it. And uh, it didn't last five minutes. <laughs> when we first started doing it, was it was something that we just wanted to, we only thought about doing it as something that we would put on at Forward in Plastic People, which is about, the dance floor is probably the size of this room, so it's 150 people. But that was all that we thought of doing it. We thought, oh, we're gonna do that and smash it up. And we, made, we built a screen so that no one could see us. We made, the, made some tracks and we were gonna, you know, do this live thing, but that was the only thing we thought about doing. So it was, uh, yeah, again, it's like like the records in the early days. We just just thought, oh, this will just be good for our shop. We didn't know it would go so big, you know. We got a, a grant from the Arts Council. Uh, our management had someone they knew there, and this was back in the day when the Arts Council actually had some money, you know. The government would give them some money and make, you know, make people go out and do artistic things. And so we got 10 grand and that gave us enough money to buy some better equipment and enough money to hire a tour manager and a bus. And we did a tour and we did, uh, we did a tour and then we got enough money from that to do another two years touring. So we toured for three years doing festivals, bigger and bigger festivals. Well, we went to a studio, uh, uh, we rented a house in Cornwall, um, like a big mansion place. It was like, uh, you know, around Christmas time. And we did two months, January and February down there and just went completely mental, <laughs> just because there was nothing to do down there, you know. So uh, we did we did sort of four or five of the, we did three of the singles there, and then uh, a couple of the other tracks, but the rest of it was back at home in each other's studios, just bouncing tracks backwards and forwards, and then, you know, two people would hook up, and then another two people would hook up, and just shared it that way. I think the, the, the one thing that's, that's going to be different about this sound class than uh, the one before was that people can go online now, pick, um, they pick a playlist and it gets put into like a competition and the, the best playlist that we pick 
those people come and they can stand on stage with us. So we're going to get punters from the crowd that they can be on our stage and part of our team, if you like. So they'll see it from from that angle. So I think it's, it's, it's good. It will give, um, if you're into music, go and have a look and then you can come and either get on our, hopefully our stage, because that'd be the best one.